what I want to talk about next is this idea of one diff, one thesis. And this is something that I think Facebook culture is really good about. But the idea is that every code change you make should be fairly atomic and focused on one particular thing. And the thing is with 5,000 lines of code, that's where you start getting into the territory of no one will reasonably spend 10 hours reviewing a thousand, 10,000 line code change. You're going to start getting people who will basically blindly accept your change. And yeah, that might feel good in the moment, but you're completely bypassing all the benefits of code review. And so really what you should be doing is instead of having a 5,000 line code change, you should break that down into smaller chunks of code change, which all have one thesis behind it. And a thesis is basically something which can describe with some amount of brevity, like it should be a quick description of what you're, of what change you're making, why you're making it and how it ladders up to the bigger change you're making. So if you have this like huge feature that you're trying to ship and it's like, you know, it could be two, 3000 lines of code, you should work hard at breaking it down into 10 or 20 smaller changes. Um, but you can defend each of them individually and test each of them individually. And it will take longer. It will for sure. It's going to put more burden on you as the code change author, but it will make life for you and the reviewer much easier because all the reviews will be much faster. And when you look back at the history, you know, like a month from now, it'll be much easier to detect, okay, this is the point where a bug was introduced, or this is a point where I can now clearly understand what, what happened. So as a rule of thumb, again, this is like very much dependent on your team and what kind of change you're making. I would say 50, 50 to 250 lines of code is a good average for how large your code change should be. And what happens is like, as you start making these changes, these are called stacked diffs or stacked code changes. And so the idea is that you have like, you know, 10 changes and you have them depend on one another. And so you have this graphical representation of, you know, here's like the dependency tree and you can go ahead and land a code change earlier once you get an approval on that. And now you only have to worry about responding to comments or improving the code in a later down code change. So it really keeps the discussion focused and you can have a much more precise deliberation on what, what changes you need to make on which diff. This one is, again, one of the easier things to, to mess up. Um, it's very rare that you'll have people who are writing diffs that are too small. Um, it's really hard to have a code change that's too small because like in the end, it's a, you know, again, I have empathy for the reviewer. The smaller the change is, the easier it is to review. Um, so like 99% of the time when I see a diff that is like a size outlier, it's like too big. And before we move on to the next slide, these three things we've just gone over, attaching context, having a nice test plan, and following the concept of one diff, one thesis. These are the most common reasons I've seen for earlier in career engineers struggle and get bad performance reviews. So when it comes to like interns, like I uh, mentored so many interns across my time at Facebook, the ones that didn't make it, it was almost always coming from these, like what we call code smell reasons where, yeah, the diff was like all their diffs were either too big or they never had like a test plan or like they didn't attach context. And then, the, you know, the, the very, the very tactical reason why all this stuff hurts you is that it takes longer for you to land code. So again, it's it's pain, it's it can feel annoying when you have to pay these, you know, these three things they add up, maybe a 15, 20 minute tax per diff. And it, it can feel annoying having to pay that tax. We all hate paying taxes, but it just it almost immediately pays you off because it makes your diffs get accepted way faster. And in the end, especially as a junior engineer, your goal is to land code and to land impact. So yeah, you have to pay 20 minute tax on every diff, but then your diff will be accepted in just one or two iterations as opposed to like four or five. Um, Cause like once you get to like four or five rounds of discussion in order to land a diff, you're talking like a week to get your code landed after it goes to diff review, which is just painfully long. And co conversely, so we, you know, similar to have like on, on the flip side of people not doing this and then struggling, the, one of the more common like strong points of promotion packets I've seen for junior engineers is they, is they do all these three things very, very well. And I've left that feedback on a lot of performance reviews on like entry level engineers at Facebook. And I'll be like, this person really takes their time to make sure that these three concepts are followed. Like the diffs are like super high quality and they get their diffs landed after just one round of feedback, like 95% of the time. Like, again, like these are low hanging fruits. Like if, if you're a junior engineer and you're trying to get promoted, and you're not doing these th three things, this is one of the easiest things you can do to immediately level up your game and look way more senior to the people 